What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of the Crack of Pack series. Today we are opening up a pack of Aether Revolt. Uh, an interesting set. Um, one that honestly I wasn't too fond of. Uh, there was a lot of cool stuff in it. Very artifact based uh, as that Kaladesh block was. Uh, so not a huge surprise there. And there were some very powerful cards. But uh, unfortunately it just wasn't my favorite set. Um, that being said... We're going to enjoy our time, and we're going to take our time, and we're going to go through every card, and we're going to hopefully be able to figure out what our first round draft pick will be. So uh, I did draft a little bit during this time, so I've got a little bit of insight and a little bit of like ideas on what to talk about, so hopefully some of those things will come up. Uh, but please, as always, share your knowledge as well. I would love to hear it, but I know a lot of other people would as well, and hopefully we can have start a conversation about that in the comments section. So all that being said, let's start off. We have Wrangle for one and a red sorcery. Gain control of target creature with power four or less until the end of the turn. Untap that creature and it gains haste until the end of the turn. Uh, very classic act of treason effect this time with that little bit of a clause, power four or less. Uh, but that does make it a little bit cheaper. Not too bad. Uh, what's great about this is it's very, very good in tandem with sacrifice effects. So anything that allows you to sacrifice a creature means that you can steal their creature, hopefully swing in with it, and then sacrifice it on your second main phase or on the end step or something like that. Uh, and then that way you get like tons and tons of value off of only two mana. Uh, very, very good. However, I would only take it if I knew I was kind of in that strategy already. That tends to be a very black red kind of strategy. Uh, don't know how prominent it was in this set, but that tends to be the case. I don't think I would take this first. I would rather take something a little bit more powerful and then hopefully lead into it. Uh, Hinterland Drake is two and a blue for a two, three flyer. Uh, it can't block artifact creatures. Uh, now, as I said at the top of this, this is a very artifact themed set. What that means for this is it's not going to be very good at blocking at all. Uh, now that's not entirely true. There's going to be some obst obstacles that it can block. Excuse me. Uh, if your opponent has a Hinterland Drake, it can block that. Uh, but I think most of the time you're going to be poking through with damage for, with something like this. Uh, at least that's the goal. Uh, and I do think it's a better pick than Wrangle. I don't think it's an amazing card, so I'm really hoping this doesn't end up being our pick. Uh, but ideally, this is really just <clears throat> a 2-3 flyer that's hopefully going to poke through for some damage in the early game. Uh, Bastion Enforcer is a 3-2 vanilla creature for 2 and a white Really don't like this unless your curving uh, or your curve consideration is in is in check here. Um, if you need a three drop, you would probably be okay with it in a white deck, uh, just as an aggressive deck. Uh, it'd be nice to have some good three drops. This isn't a great one, but it is kind of on stat. It's fine. Uh, definitely going to take the Hinterland Drake over it. It's not very exciting. Uh, a lot of times vanilla creatures like this, uh, unless they've got some good, like, solid stats for the set, uh, are not usually worth taking. Uh, they tend to trade off very often uh, for something a lot worse than it. Uh, and especially with this two toughness, it's going to be very easy for your opponent to trade off with something. So uh, I definitely would take the Hinterland Drake here. Not very excited about the Enforcer. Uh, ooh, Daring Demolition. Uh, sorcery for two and two black. Destroy target creature or vehicle. Uh, vehicles, if you don't know, I'm sure we'll see one probably in the later part of the pack, but uh, they are artifacts that if crewed uh, with a specific number of power, toughness, whatever, uh, creatures essentially, uh, then become artifact creatures, uh, which is really, really cool. It's a really nice mechanic. It gives you some longevity and things like that that I really like. Uh, and this is just a really good removal spell. Uh, not only does it hit creatures, but it also hits those vehicles, whether or not they've become a creature already. Uh, and so this is just super solid. Solid, definitely the pick so far. Uh, I'm going to mess this up. Natural Obsolescence. 
I hope I said it right. Uh, one and a green for an instant. Put target artifact on the bottom of its owner's library. Uh, worth noting, this hits a lot of stuff uh, in this set because it's an artifact theme set. Uh, there's a lot of tokens. There's a lot of artifact vehicles. There's a lot of just regular artifact creatures. Any of those you get to throw back on the bottom of your opponent's library is probably what you're going to be doing with this, at least in limited, uh, at instant speed for two mana. That's pretty good. I will say, I think I would take the Daring Demolition over it solely because it is just destroy target thing, uh, and I'd rather have a destroy than put on the bottom of the deck. Essentially in limited, those are probably going to be the same thing, but if your opponent has a way to shuffle, for instance, then that changes. So... I think Daring Demolition, a little bit more of a reliable kill spell, obviously, uh, but both of these are actually very good. I would actually be very happy to have both uh, at some point. <clears throat> uh, Finn Holler uh, is a 5-5 for 6 and a black. Pretty expensive on the face of it, but it does have Improvise, so your artifacts can help cast this spell. Each artifact you tap after you've done... Uh, after you're done activating mana abilities, pays for one generic mana. Uh, so if you've got artifacts out, out on the field, they essentially tap for one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so you can't actually cast this out and ramp this out is the goal. Uh, Finn Holler can't be blocked by artifact creatures. That's actually very huge in this set. Uh, again, we're seeing we're going to see a lot of artifacts in this uh, overall. Uh, and so being able to kind of circumvent all of that seems really, really good. <clears throat> I think I'd still rather have the Daring Demolition. It's just a powerful kill spell. This is a very good bomb, don't get me wrong, but I think there are probably a lot better ones out there. Uh, and I don't know how reliably you can ramp him out. Uh, obviously, you're going to have a lot of artifacts, I would hope. Uh, but if you're trading off and dealing combat and things like that, you may not be able to tap them down for mana every single time if you're attacking with them or something like that. <clears throat> Uh, Aether Inspector is a 2-3 three for 3 and a white. Uh, it does have Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. So, energy was introduced in Kaladesh, uh, followed through with in Aether Revolt. It was essentially a whole other uh, resource that you could utilize. So, in this case, you get a couple energy just for playing the card. Uh, and then you can use that, that energy or pay those counters to get a different effect. In this case, uh, when it attacks, you can pay two energy, and if you do, you create a 1-1 one, one servo artifact creature token. So, this one spits out tokens if you can attack with it. Uh, very powerful card, for sure. Anything that uh, utilizes that energy is going to be pretty good. Uh, not, I say anything, most things that utilize the energy are going to be pretty good. Uh, just because it's bringing in a whole other resource for you, you might as well utilize it. This is going to be a really good way to do it. Um, <clears throat> that being said, this is a 2-3 for 4. <laughs> uh, it does have Vigilance, which helps a little bit, but a 2-3 for 4 is not going to be able to swing in all that often, uh, in my opinion. There are probably ways you can make this happen more reliably, but that's going to get outpowered like super quickly. Uh, so out of these cards, Daring Demolition, definitely the better pick in my opinion. Uh, Implement of Ferocity is an artifact for one of any color. Uh, pay a green and sacrifice it. Put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Activate this ability only at a time you could cast a sorcery. Uh, when it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you do draw a card. Uh, these implements were, there was one basically for every color. Uh, I seem to remember they were all fairly playable. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, and hopefully we'll see some more. But uh, they're all pretty much playable from my understanding. And for only one mana for an artifact, you're not really investing a lot anyway. Uh, and they all give you that buffer. So in this case, they give you a counter on a creature uh, and then draw you a card, which is nice. So I actually like these cards. Uh, still not better than Daring Demolition for sure, but definitely a solid card. <clears throat> Uh, Reservoir Walker is 5 mana for a 3-3, three, three, very expensive. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you do gain 3 life and you get 3 energy. Um, the crucial thing here is that 3 energy, because hopefully you're going to be able to utilize that for other cards that you have. Uh, really, really kind of make that a synergistic card. Uh, that being said, this is not a reason to be in energy. This is not a reason to go there. So as strong as you know, gaining that 3 energy and that 3 life is, you're still paying 5 mana for a 3-3. Three, three which feels bad. Uh, all that's that, um, the three life, the three energy, and then the three, three power and toughness. Pretty cool. Why is it five mana? Makes no sense. That seems ridiculous. Uh, so I, I don't personally like this card very much. Um, but I think if you're in the energy deck, it is a consideration. <clears throat> uh, implement of malice, an artifact for two mana. 
Uh, obviously part of the implement cycle we just talked about. Pay a black, sacrifice it. Target player discards a card. Again, activate it only at a time you could cast a sorcery. Uh, when the implement is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you do draw a card. So I'm assuming, if I remember correctly as well, anytime any of these hit the graveyard, you get to draw a card, which is nice. Um, I think this is an okay one. I don't necessarily think it's quite as, uh, we'll say, efficient and probably good as the, uh, the implement of Ferocity. I remembered that. Uh, I think this is okay, but your opponent gets to choose that card that they're discarding. Most often, it's probably just going to be a land or a non, a non crucial card to what they're doing. Uh, so, as as powerful as that can be, I, and I do think it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's the pick here. Obviously, I think we've just got a better pick uh, with that removal spell. Uh, our first uncommon is Ravenous Intruder. It is a 1-2 for 1 and a red. Sacrifice an artifact, and the intruder gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of the turn. Uh, as we've seen, there are going to be artifacts throughout this. Great to hit with the implement, for instance. Anytime it's put into the graveyard, you get to draw a card, so there's some synergy there. Uh, pull this and then pull a bunch of implements, and then you're in, you're in good shape. Um, that being said... I don't know if that's good enough uh, over Daring Demolition. Um, it is a very aggressive card, which I love. Uh, excuse me. And your opponent is going to have to deal with it pretty quickly, which is cool. I believe that's Soul Ring in the art as well, which is awesome. Um, but uh, it's very tough to pick that over Daring Demolition. I got to be honest. It's just solid removal. I got to go with the removal, I think. This is just a really powerful card, though, so I could kind of go either way. I'm going to stick with Daring Demolition for now, though. Uh, Fatal Push. Well, this is great. Instant for one black. Destroy target creature if it has a converted mana cost of two or less. Uh, Revolt was specific to this set. So destroy that creature if it has a converted mana cost of four or less. Instead, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn. So in tandem with like the intruder, for instance, you sacrifice an artifact. This all of a sudden triggers Revolt and you can hit stronger stuff with it, which is very good. Um, I kind of want to say it's a better, it's a more efficient pick for sure than Fatal Push, or excuse me, than Daring Demolition. I think I would take it here. It hits less, I know that, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, feel free, of course, to disagree, um, but that's that would be my assumption. Uh, Pema Aether Seer is our last uncommon. It's a 3-2 for 3 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, you get an amount of energy equal to the greatest power among creatures that you control. At minimum, that's going to be three because she's three. Uh, pay three and target creature blocks this turn if able. That seems very good. Uh, gotta be honest. Um, solely because this could lead to... So at minimum, it's three, which means you're going to be able to hit this once no matter what. Uh, or use the ability once no matter what. If you have a four, four or whatever... You're getting extra energy, which just means you're pulling it up for either another activation for this or some other card. Um, the the creatures having to block this turn is also quite nice because you can really force your opponent into some bad blocks, which is sweet. Uh, they'll probably try and steer into the skid a little bit and like overblock you, uh, which is fine. But then hopefully you can kind of do something really cool with that as well. So this may be incorrect, guys, but I'm going to take the seer here. Um, well, okay, just kidding. Probably going to take Rishkar. Uh, Rishkar, Pema Renegade, uh, is a 2-2 two -two for 2 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one counter of each of up to 2 target creatures. That can be itself, just to clarify. Uh, each creature you control with a counter on it has tap, add green to your mana pool. So this does a lot of things, let me just say. Early in the game, you're still establishing your board. It's turn 3. Hopefully you've got a creature out already. If you've got any two drop, any one drop, it doesn't really matter. Play out Rishkar. Put a counter on Rishkar, put a counter on the other creature. You then have one extra mana to utilize this turn if you have a follow-up play. If you don't, that's fine. Next turn. Uh, if you don't, that's fine because you can swing in with that creature, just to clarify, because it's probably going to be able to outpower the opposing side. Um, next turn, you untap. You play your land. You all of a sudden are on turn six. Uh, if nothing is done to your board. That's huge. That's a really big swing. That just means that you have six mana to do with whatever you would like. Hopefully a very powerful play. That's on point. So I got to go with Rishkar here. We do have our forest and our energy reserve uh, token, but 
Rishkar seems like an easy pick to me. I gotta be honest. It's not like a crazy bomb, but it helps you really, really get to your crazy bombs, which is super awesome. So that's going to be my pick. Feel free again. Please start a discussion in the comment section. We'd love to talk to you guys and see what your opinions are. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.